you're doing the Calgary Marathon right now. You know, Taylor, I'm doing great. Yeah. Having a good time. Yeah. Get a chance to be an honorary Calgarian. Over the weekend, right. I got my white hat. White hat now. It's amazing. Are you going to be wearing it again? Absolutely. I have horses. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah. I live in Arizona. And uh, we have a ranch, my wife and I, and we've got three horses. So, yeah, so I wear a hat. Cowboy. <laughs> it's a regular thing. Regular you know, thing. In Calgary, even though we are a very Albertan or, uh, or a Western province, it's not... Uh, it's not something that happens. There's a lot of fake cowboys here. You know? No, it's the real deal. The stampede is coming right around the oh, corner. Yeah. I pay attention when I go visit. I want to make sure I know what's going on. <laughs> Are you going to stick around for that? No, I won't be here that long. Oh. I'll actually be doing another convention in uh, Louisville. Okay. Back in uh, the States again. Um, I was reading a little bit up on you, um, and you <laughs> I found some things. No. Yeah, there's a lot out there. <laughs> No, there was, it was all good, but um, you were in the military for a little bit, and I'm curious if that was before this? Or yeah, I was, uh, I was in the Army for four years, um, way back when, yeah. like 45 years ago. Wow. So, um, honorably discharged, I was in the infantry. So I was a sergeant and did that, like I said, back in the 70s. Wow. Um, you know, I, for me, it was a good boost of confidence and morale, uh, physical structure, you know, because you get the patience and the deliverance of what yeah. you're doing. So I look at it as a great time. It's good, but it just wasn't something you wanted to stick around for. <laughs> no, it, wasn't, it was one of those things. I went in when I was 17 okay. and 21. I was a sergeant in the infantry. Uh, my last wow. assignment was uh, Fort Ord, California. And I made the choice to go ahead and get out and move on to the next part of my career. And you have children. Yes. Uh, you know, I am a stepfather for two girls. Aww. And I have a son. And the girls are 20, 22, and the boys 24. Wow. Do you use some of the practices you learned to the military on them? Oh, yeah. It's all about discipline. No. Yes. Having um, them clean up. One, one thing you learn about the discipline is you kind of learn how to negotiate a little better. Mm. Yeah. You can't always say do it. No. Because they're not going to. Yeah. So it's how about if we, mm, uh -huh, yeah, and options. You know, it's ch I have a child as well, and it's very much it's a, it's a tiny human first right. off, and kids are so much smarter than you think they are. Oh yeah, they're, they're playing you all the oh, time. Oh, they are, and and it's a <laughs> I I always use a hypnosis term. Oh, no. it, it, it's called suggestive thought. <laughs> so I always okay. give them a suggestive thought, yeah. and hopefully they will bite into it and go forward. But it also works good in the employment world when I ran casino resorts. Rather than telling everybody what to do, let's talk about it, find the best resolution. Now, the best resolution may not be your idea, unfortunately, but if I can give you a reason why it isn't feasible, hopefully you'll bite into why we didn't go that direction. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, I guess they learn a lesson out of it. I hope so. Yeah. You know, it makes you better leaders. I always say anybody can be a leader if they want to. It just takes a lot of patience. Are you still in the, the casino and nightclub business? Actually, I, I, yeah, I was had the fortunate ability to retire two, year, two years ago. Good for you. In 2017, and uh, my last position was chief operating officer of two casino resorts in Southern wow. California. So I had a roughly 2,500 employees, give or take 450 million in revenues. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to step away, and I always knew I had my Jason resume to fall back on. <laughs> that's true. Go figure. And with doing that, I could do it and have fun. Yeah. That's an amazing life you got. Thank you. Me. But you're, after this, you're going to a couple more conventions. Um, are your children involved in this, too? Do they ever travel with you? or are they? they actually, I've taken uh, Sage two years ago. We went yeah. to Germany. Oh. And we took Sage to Germany, and then we went to Holland so we could see my wife's family. She has family in Holland. Okay. So um, they do travel. My son, when he was small, I took him to a show yeah. in California. Um, and then right now, we just finished a movie, Vengeance. It's Friday the 13th. Uh, it'll come out on a social platform uh, in the next 30 days. I actually wow. played Jason's father in this one, oh. Elias Voorhees. Wow. So I have a four-month beard, long, straggly hair, so and I square nice. off with my son, who doesn't want to listen, talking <laughs> about children. Because wow. daddy knows best, but yeah. I'm trying to explain to my son, and of course I'm speaking in this one, he doesn't speak, it's Jason. Hmm. So, and he's thinking about what I'm telling him, and he's not really doing what I'm telling him. Hmm. So he's going to learn a lesson. Right? Actually, he takes it out on me, he gets a little rough with that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that happens too, you know. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens yes. with that. But the cool thing about the Vengeance film, it's a Friday 13th, it's a fan film. Now the social network is so enormous mm. in today's culture that yes. 
it will be seen by millions and millions. A um, couple tidbits in it. Uh, it picks up from part six when Jason's underwater. And then it goes into where Steve Dash, who played Jason number two, just passed away in December 2018. He actually has a role in it. He plays the sheriff. And I as Eli as Voorhees kill him. Wow. Right. And then also uh, Henry, who did all the music for all the, uh, excuse me, Harry, for all of the uh, Friday the 13th, allowed them to use his music. Then Tom McLaughlin that did the writing, uh, directing of part six, consulted on it, and he also has a bit part in it. And I can't tell you anymore because I'd have to kill you. Okay. We don't want that. Yeah. I got things to do. You also have things to do. This man here is waiting to see you. So He's I'm going to. He is being patient. That's what so. That's what's great about the fans. They'll wait and they know things are going on. And this gives us an opportunity to continue to push the conventions forward. Yeah, because like you said, in the social world, it has taken over in this generation. Right. Um, people need to be constantly stimulated. There needs to be things going on. So it's nice that we still have these kinds of things where you can meet face to face and have a very personal um, conversation kind of below the surface and get to know somebody. Yeah, and the nice thing is the, the conventions from Comic Cons to cosplay to horror conventions slash tattoo conventions mm -hmm. have all intermingled, intertwined. Yeah, it's very and true. And it's very nice because they've grown immensely over the last five, ten years, and now they've become the norm. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there was just a show three hours north of here uh, a month ago, and now there's one here. And if you go through the state, there's a show probably every week or two for sure wow. throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to come down and check out one of those, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Come ride some horses, maybe. Some ride the horses. Got three. Got three? Okay. There's one for me, one for you, one for you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when did you allow your kids to see you, please? You know, they saw uh, 10, 11, and 12. Okay. My son, even though he's my size, height wise, a little thinner than I, not even interested in it. He's just quiet really? as can be. My 22 uh, year old, she's in the hair industry and she does eyelashes and everything. And, that sort of thing, but my 20 year old, you know, she's really the big fan, yeah. you know. Uh, six, seven years ago, we had a birthday party and she decided to do a Friday the 13th party. Oh, cool. So I had to come home from work and, and sign autographs for all of her <laughs> friends. And then I went back to work, put my suit back yeah. on and went back to work. Man, I bet they had a lot of their friends come over to see, or their friends wanted to come over. Yeah, well the girls were very adamant to their mom not to let me answer the door. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as the guys coming in found out I was Jason, oh, yeah. they didn't give the girls any attention. They want to talk about Jason. <laughs> so the girls. I thought they were going to be I, scared. No, right I, I was competition okay. for the girls because they, well, they want to hang out with CJ. <laughs> no, don't let him answer the door. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, well, I think uh, you're probably an amazing dad. You are an amazing actor. You're thank amazing. You. Uh, just an amazing human being in general. I thank feel. you. Yeah, and thank you for taking time to sit and chat with me. And My pleasure. Enjoy the rest of the Calgary Horror Con. Thanks a lot. There's Appreciate a lot. it. It's getting busy up here again. It is. We're ready yeah. to go to work.